And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, hope you're all well, before we do get into today's video as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Guys, we are back in action of course tonight as we take on St. Johnston at Ibrox, another very very important game of course after a very very good week, that is all history now, we have secured our place in the Europa League last 16, we have also of course um, won the League Cup, but as I stated that is now history and there's still more trade trophies to win. That is the mentality of a Rangers player and especially us as fans. That's what we have in mind. We have a real good opportunity to go and close the gap and try and make sure that we try and go for this league title. Um, so yeah, we need to be making sure that there is no hangover. There is no um, hangover from the game in the final and we can go straight into this game and beat a decent St. Johnson side um, who have shown good signs recently as of late uh, with regards to what they've been trying to do. In today's video, guys, we of course will provide you a bit of an injury update with regards to our players. Uh, we'll also go through um, the, t the ticket debacle at the moment, this moment in time with regards to Rangers and Celtic. Uh, we're we'll also going through a bit of the January transfer window news as Lawrence Shanklin has broken his silence on the Rangers link. So yeah, quite a few bits and pieces to discuss. Just a quick one guys, we have released our brand new Rangers Christmas drop. We've got the Sing in the Sash tees along with the famous RFC Christmas tea. Do browse the new collection by going down into the link in the description or go to rfcclothing.com. Anyway, let's get into today's video. Okay, guys, so starting with the uh, injury news, and basically, yeah, and no one is fit in um, regards to that. So basically, Philippe Comagant said no players will return who were not involved in the cup final on Sunday. There are no other players coming back as just of yet. Um, he also went on to say, I don't have a time scale on Jose Sanfuentes, but a few days ago, we were told it would be worse, but he had a good reaction to the treatment. I hope we can be back for the winter break. Ryan Jack we will also see if he can be back for the winter break also. On Kimar Roos Fitness, Clement ex explained he is not ready for 90 minutes. It's my, it is my choice to make it if he does start or not. But did state, of course, um, he is not ready for the full 90 minutes as of yet. So no players set to return. Ryan Jack, Jose Sinfuentes, all these kind of players probably looking um, to come back in mid-January. Um, but hopefully we'll have enough between sort of now and then um, to try and get all the... Try and win all our games that we have remaining um, but yeah hopefully uh, as I said we don't pick up any more injuries uh, from now until the sort of winter break itself um, now, with regards to other stuff, yesterday, as I stated, um, St. Johnson is our focus. But, of course, in the distance, as we do with the old firm, of course, with Rangers and Celtic, we're always looking, counting down to that next derby match. And, um, of course, Rangers feeling very, very confident going into it. Kind of Rangers on the, the upwards trajectory and then Celtic kind of spiraling down at this moment in time. So it is only natural for us to kind of uh, be relishing this and looking forward to the derby. Um, however, basically, Celtic have confirmed... Uh, that there will be no Rangers fans in attendance once again for this derby. Again, again, it's a situation that's kind of been going on now, uh, toing and froing for two years. I think it actually was, as I said, from a Rangers point of view. I do think it was actually our fault to begin with. We kind of cut their allocation down. And I know with you guys in the comment section below, you guys kind of argue a lot of people are for it. Some people are against it. But with regards to the actual derby, you know, growing up um, in the noughties and stuff like that, the actual the, the derby itself, with the, the full stand for the away, stand, the away supports, and we had um, the same amount of sort of tickets at Celtic Park made the derby so much more um, electric the atmosphere was really really intense um, and basically it has never really been the same since then especially with zero away fans um, in attendance but basically Celtic have kind of seeked out and basically stated that they're not going to let any away fans into the to the match until their fans feel safe at Ibrox um, there has been reports that Rangers may potentially put netting up this is due to our fans um, or some individuals throwing like eggs and throwing bottles and stuff like that into the sort of away end um, but as I stated, yeah, Celtic aren't going to budge on this matter until Rangers protect their fans um, at Ibrox with regards to their away allocation. Um, and as I stated before, I always think, I know I can see it from both sides of the, the, the fence in terms of what our supporters are thinking. Some fans don't want to give Celtic the whole stand because, well, what does that mean for our fans? They're not going to be able to, to, to go to the old firm games. But I think it should be like the European allocation. What they should do is basically have... Um, 
have the how was it was it for Borussia Dortmund how it is when the big European sides come to Ibrox we kind of give them the the usual corner allocation but then a tiny bit of the stand as well and it kind of makes for a good viewing and I think that's what Celtic really should be given and then we in return will get a decent size um, or seats in the derby this just makes perfect sense in my personal opinion because well it's not the same without it it really isn't the atmosphere isn't as good yes some would argue it's better for the the home support or the home side yes maybe true um, but recently no 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 I don't I prefer it as as it used to be where two sets of fans are going at it is the best way I personally think in my opinion um, whilst that's still a situation at this moment in time um, that's uh, what it is hopefully it does get sorted but I probably can't see anything getting sorted until next season um, guys in other news uh, of course we are approaching that January transfer window I think we're at 10 days away um, and basically we're a player that we have been heavily linked to recently is Laurent Shankland um, and basically has responded to speculation uh, linking him with a possible January transfer move to Rangers um, this comes after his goal against Celtic at the weekend um, basically explained with regards to being linked to Rangers um, it's a sign you're doing well when there's speculation that's what I take from that it's always been the case throughout my career there's always been speculation flying about it's a sign I'm doing my job well and scoring goals that's all I focus on doing my job for hearts and doing well uh, on his goal against Celtic Shankin continued I was just focused on hitting the target when you find yourself a bit free it's just about hitting the target it's always better when you're winning that makes it more special the boys can be proud of the performance it's been a real long time since hearts came here and won you need to enjoy those moments and, uh, and we deserve to enjoy it uh, this week following the speculation with regards to Rangers at the Hearts AGM Andrew McKinley stressed that the club have no plans to sell Shankland in January as he expressed slight bemusement at the level of negativity surrounding the Tyneside club basic Tyne Castle club sorry there's a lot of speculation about Lawrence but I can categorically say that no one agents or clubs or anyone has said anything to us about Lawrence leaving in January or has approached us uh, there has been absolutely nothing on the subject we are totally dealing with a conjecture we are looking we are not looking to sell Lawrence in January if someone comes with an exceptional bid then we'd have the duty to consider it as a board but it's self-evident in the last number of games how important Lawrence is to the club hence it would take an incredibly exceptional deal for us to even think about it um, again, look, Lawrence is never going to go, yes, I want to go, but he is a Rangers fan. He's been pictured at Ibrox many, many times. Um, and of course, Hearts are not in a position where they can just say no to, to X amount of millions of pounds. Now, in terms of actual R links, they, they actually are true. The AGM, there is actually no links, concrete links or any news that we are actually going to be making a move for Lawrence Shankland at all. It's kind of all the sort of Rangers ex-legends at this moment of time linking the player to the football club. So that's something that we'll just have to watch out on um, but yeah at this moment in time nothing nothing here yet just yet um, something we'll just have to, to to monitor but I do think we'll probably make a move for him it just kind of makes sense um, and he'd it'd be better to take him to Ibrox than let him maybe go to Celtic Park. You don't want them. They're going to be hoovering about or sniffing about for a striker also. Um, but yeah, Rangers fans, that's all I've got for you today. Do let me know your thoughts on the situation in regards to the ticket allocation. Let me know your score predictions for the game against St. Johnston. And do you want Lawrence Shankland in January? Yes or no? Let me know down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Rangers content. Remember, we do have Rangers Christmas merchandise available on our website, so do browse the collection by going down into the link in the description or going to rcclothing.com. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.